next speaker is Ted Schlegel, who's going to talk about, I never wrote the rehab prescription. My patient called, heard, and felt a pop two months post-repair. Now what do I do? Good morning. So uh, it, it the theme of complications, uh, we're going to talk about issues potentially related to re-rupture after repair. This isn't something that we want to deal with, but uh, can occur, and we have to have a, a good treatment algorithm of how we're going to think through this. Um, these are things that unfortunately happen more frequently than we want. Uh, somebody gets off, uh, they're um, on their own for their rehab, or they haven't followed through with rehab, and we get this call two months out, listen, hey, it was, it was lifting something heavy, uh, I felt this pop, uh, what am I going to do? These are my disclosures, nothing to do with this talk. So I think the first thing we have to decide is, what was the cause of the pop? could be a failure of a repair. So that would be disappointing and uh, we'd have to manage that. But there are other things that we have to think about. Other causes, scar, adhesions can give you a, a pop and pain. Biceps rupture, if you, didn't, uh, if you didn't manage the biceps at the time of surgery, you had a degenerative biceps, that could rupture. Maybe that's not a big deal. AC joints. So these are the things that have to go through our mind when we're thinking about this. If we're gonna do imaging, one of the things that we have to be careful about is that particularly with some of the high strength sutures that are in now, they can create an artifact that looks like a re-tear. So just be very, very careful as you use the imaging that you're putting this all together uh, with the patient's story and understanding really what the pathology is. Why is two months significant? Well, this is, this is uh, work that we did uh, back in the 90s when we were working on uh, all arthroscopic rotator cuff repair systems. So in an animal model, we looked at time to healing. And our hope was, as we were working on uh, this uh, with arthroscopic repairs, we were going to accelerate everyone's rehab. But what we found out is the time it took for a tendon to heal was much longer than we had imagined. So for the first six weeks, there's hardly any strength in the repair. And then uh, by 12 weeks, the tendon's only about 25% of a normal tendon. So this is a really critical time, at least uh, in an animal model. Um, this was a study, the other study that we're talking about here is Bruce Miller's study out of Michigan. Um, he looked at, uh, we heard about this earlier this morning, two tendon tears where they repaired them and then uh, ultrasounded them every two weeks. Unfortunately, they found out that they had 40% failure rate but if they, were gonna, if they were gonna fail, they usually were, uh, failed within the first 12 weeks. So once again, this was the reason that we picked probably the two month time period of what's happening in these. So I have this patient, 55 year old oral surgeon, this guy should know better, but uh, says he uh, felt a pop after carrying four by fours to get his cabin ready for the summer and calls me up after having a three by three centimeter uh, repair. And now unfortunately with the MR, there is no artifact from the um, suture, it's, it's truly a repair. And we have to decide what we're gonna do. Now, unfortunately, it's my problem, so gotta work through this. So why did it fail? So Pascal uh, looked at multiple causes of failures, fallen rotator cuffs, initial t uh, tear size, extension and retractions, one. Uh, rotator cuff tendon quality, obviously. Patient age, which we heard a little bit about. Are there other medical com comorbidities? And then uh, did the patient follow through with the rehab program that we talked about? If you look at uh, factors predicting re-tears, this is a study done out of Australia, level three study, overall re-tear rate was 17%. And then they went back and did uh, analysis uh, looking at what are the biggest factors for the re-tear. And as you could imagine, rotator cuff size, tendon thickness, and the patient age. So if size is important, are there are other things that we need to worry about. Well, I just talked about the fact that uh, one of the things that's the weak link in this repair and we heard is that it's the suture within the tendon. So we know that the anchors are strong, the suture within the anchor is strong, um, but the tendon interface is the weak part. And as uh, surgeons have looked at tendon quality and, and tissue mobility, uh, we know that there's a lot of tension on these bigger repairs and uh, this probably complicates our chance of success biologic factors in age. So poor bone quality, weak degenerative tendons, also decreased healing potential with aging. So who's the patient that we're gonna uh, see? Uh, we have to decide if they have a re-tear and it's an older patient, we might think about it one way. Younger patient that needs to be more active, uh, better um, uh, chance for success, we might think about repairing those uh, or revising them. So the treatment al uh, algorithm is 
uh, what we just talked about, age, occupation, patient expectation, and goals. So they, they, they uh, share in this decision making. Uh, and then also we know that patients that have poor function uh, and range of motion are probably not going to do as well. And also if we did the repair initially and we know that that, tension, uh, that tear was under a lot of tension or is poor tissue quality, or we know that the MRI shows uh, a lot of fatty infiltration, um, those may be ones that we're going to be a little more careful about. Just because the tear failed doesn't mean that the patients aren't going to do well. And this is a study done out of HSS in Rush that showed that the patients had recurrent tears. Uh, if they treated them non-operatively over a period of about seven years, a lot of those patients still had good results. But you should note that they, uh, their function wasn't quite as great as it would have been if the tendon was intact. Indication for revision surgery, I guess what I'm thinking about are younger patients where we know that they had good range of motion uh, going into the surgery. They have good tissue quality. Uh, we're going to be thinking about somebody that's um, an important functional thing for their arm dominance. And we want to know, is it going to be repairable? So what can we expect with revision surgeries? Uh, with open surgeries, this was done um, by Lou Bigliani. Uh, 80 consecutive cases, they were uh, mostly massive tears. They had about a 60% good result when they did revision. And most of those patients were satisfied. However, uh, one third of them still had functional deficits. In this uh, single surgeon uh, experience uh, with arthroscopic repairs, 11 out of the 14 were massive, six which involved three tendon tears. And in, in these cases, often they'll have missed a subscap tendon repair initially, which they addressed in the surgery. And the majority of them were satisfied with their outcome. Um, this is a study out of Rush, uh, level 4, 54, underwent arthroscopic revision and uh, had improvement of their ASES score and uh, SST score. Overall shoulder um, pain relief and function were improved. Um, if you look at uh, this, you, you have to look at, uh, these are going to be technically demanding, and if we are going to do revisions, we've got to be really careful with the rehab afterwards. One last thing to note is that even if we repair them and they do well clinically, they, that doesn't mean that they're necessarily intact. And Jay Keener showed this in their study that only 40 uh, or 50 percent of their tendons that were revised had an intact repair. So if I look at this, uh, what am I going to think about? I'm going to put all those factors in that we just talked about. If I fixed it initially, I thought I got a good repair and they had a traumatic incident afterwards, going to definitely go back and try to fix that early. And just counsel the patient that there's a chance that there's not going to lead to an a, uh, intact repair. If they're atraumatic, failed late, might consider a non-operative program for them. So thank you.